Hi guys! Greetings from Portugal! I'm Sandra and in this video we will check the Creality Ender Tree Max. So, for all the details, just stay tuned! Hi guys, my name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. Hi guys, welcome back! Today we will unbox and assemble the Ender 3 Max. This printer is similar to the Ender 3 Pro but with a bigger print volume and a few other extras. So, let's start by opening the box. So, right at the top we have a bag with tools and user manual, a small sample of white PLA filament, the power cord, one part of the spool holder, the display, the second part of the spool holder, and the power supply. At the bottom, we have the top half and the bottom half of the printer. Both are connected with cables, so we need to be careful when taking them out. And this is everything that came inside the box. Inside this bag, we can find a cutter, screws, a needle to unclog the nozzle, a memory card reader and memory card, a spare nozzle and a couple of pneumatic fitting ring locks. There's also a user manual. This manual looks very detailed and with lots of useful information. And here is the power supply. On the side you have a selector to switch the main input voltage between 230 and 110 volts. This is something you need to check before the first power on. If you want to access the connections, there are a couple of screws that need to be removed. Here you can check that this is a 24 volt and 14.6 amp power supply from Meanwell, which is a well-known good quality power supply. The display is the same type as the Ender 3 and 3 Pro models, but with a different support mount. These two plastic pieces are the spool holder. To assemble it, just attach the shaft piece and turn it to lock it. At the other end, there is a rotating piece that will allow to adjust the angle. This spool holder is installed at the side of the printer. And now the base. This base has the same width as the base of the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro, but Creality was able to increase the size of the printing area by attaching the 20 by 40 vertical profiles to the sides of the base and this way gaining the extra millimeters needed for its 310 by 320 millimeters bed. To access the board, you need to first remove this screw on the top. We always recommend to remove the print surface and keep it safe until the assembly is complete. And finally, to access the board, these three screws also need to be removed. Inside, we can find a 32-bit Creality 4.2.2 board. Unlike the board from the Ender 3, the board on the Max is equipped with TMC drivers on the X and Y axis and Allegro 4988 on the Z and Extruder. As usual with Creality printers, the wires that connect in the green screw type connectors haven't been crimped with ferrules and worse than that are tinned with solder. This is not a good idea, so we always recommend to crimp these wires with ferrules for a better and safer electrical connection. 
And this is the top half of the printer. All the components are already attached to it, so the assembly procedure is much quicker. The X gantry is parked at the top, and here we can see the print head, the X axis end stop switch, and at the bottom the Z axis end stop. At the back we can see the filament runout sensor and the extruder. At the bottom we have the Z stepper motor and a single lead screw to move the gantry up and down. At the bottom and at the sides we can find the holes that will be used to pass the screws to secure the top half to the base. And now Sander will show how to attach the top half but before she can do that and because both parts are connected together by all the cables it's better to lower the X gantry down to halfway by rotating the coupler. Make sure you have the print head facing forward and then slide the vertical beams down and over the recessed areas on the base. Then take the four long screws and use them to secure the top half but don't fully tighten them just yet. It's very important to have the frame perfectly squared, so get a square and make sure you get the vertical profiles at 90 degrees when tightening the screws. Next, confirm if the vertical profiles are at the same distance between them at the bottom and at the top. If not, loosen the top screws and correct the distance at the top. Also, don't forget to check if the vertical profiles are perfectly parallel with each other. Next, grab the two M4 by 25 screws and use them to install the power supply to the right vertical profile. The two wires from the power supply go under the printer and connect to the female XT60 that is connected to the board. Next is the display. Once again, the flat cable goes under the printer and connects to the EXP3 connector on the display. To secure the display, use the two M5 by 10 screws. Now let's connect the rest of the components. The wires have labels on them, so it's easy to identify each one. First is the extruder stepper motor, then the filament runout sensor, then the X axis stepper motor. and the X-axis end stop switch. Make sure that both the heat bed cable and the long cable that goes up to the X gantry pass under the printer. Last but not least are the Z-axis stepper motor and the Z-axis end stop switch. As for the spool holder, it is attached to the left side of the printer. Ok, and now we can install the glass back on. This is a 310 by 320 4 mm thick carborundum glass that is placed on the aluminum plate. And the assembly is now complete. But before you can start printing, 
there are some adjustments and calibrations that need to be done. This printer does not have belt tensioners, so if you need to adjust the x-axis belt, you need to loosen these two screws, adjust the tension by moving the idler mount, and tighten back the screws. For the y-axis belt, you need to loosen the four screws on the sides, adjust, and tighten back the screws. This next step is very important, because since the printer only has one lead screw, the X gantry needs to be correctly assembled. If you notice this issue on the right side of the X gantry, this means that the right Z carriage was installed too far to the right, and the two outer wheels are not making good contact on the vertical profile. To fix it, the carriage needs to move to the left. So, here's a quick and simple technique that we normally use and that you can try. From the back side, loosen the two screws that secure the carriage to the horizontal profile. Make sure the carriage is free and can move a little bit to the left and right. The inner wheel is equipped with an eccentric nut that is used to adjust the wheel's grip. So, we will turn that eccentric nut so that the inner wheel pushes the carriage in. When you feel the outer wheels are both against the vertical profile and making good contact, tighten the two screws and then correctly adjust the wheel's grip. For a correct adjustment, the wheels cannot move freely, but at the same time you should be able to turn them. We have a video explaining this in detail, so check it out. With the carriage on the correct place, the X gantry will not wobble. And when moving the Z up and down, the amount of movement must be the same at the left and at the right. The wheel's grip on the X and Y carriages also need to be checked. For the X axis carriage, the eccentric nut is located on the bottom wheel. And on the Y axis carriage, there is an eccentric nut on the middle wheel of the left side and two eccentric nuts on the outer wheels on the right side. Next, we need to level the bed and adjust the nozzle to bed distance. The Z end stop is not adjustable, so we need to do this adjustment on the bed knobs only. The printer is sent with the bed springs fully loaded, so we need to loosen them first. But before that, move the print head to the center of the bed and lower the Z by rotating the coupler until the end stop is triggered. Now, rotate the four knobs clockwise to raise the bed, and stop when it gets close to the nozzle. Connect the power cord and turn the printer on. Then, in the menus, go to Prepare, then Preheat PLA, and then Preheat PLA Bed. Wait for the bed to reach the set temperature and then click on Auto Home. The printer will then run the home sequence. After the home sequence, click on Disable Steppers and manually move the print head to the first corner. Get a 0.1 mm thick piece of paper and level the bed by rotating the bed knob. Stop when you feel the nozzle rubbing the piece of paper. Move to the second corner and repeat the process. Do this for all four corners and as many times as needed until you get all four corners leveled. When done, move the print head to the center of the bed and check again. The center cannot be adjusted, but will give you the indication of how flat the glass is. OK, you are now ready to test the printer and run your first test print. Don't forget to calibrate the extruder and flow or multiplier to dial in your machine and slicer profile. Soon, we will publish the detailed review of this printer with all the pros and cons, so don't miss it. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video and if yes, don't forget to give it a like. We will see you guys next time. Bye!